Hi, this is Kevin Deal from Upscale Audio, and today we're going to talk about the Parasound JC3 Plus. Oh my God, I love this phono stage. I mean, I love this phono stage. You folks know that we do a lot of analog at Upscale Audio, right? We do a lot of analog. I mean, on a good day, I mean, like during the holidays, we might set up like 10 turntables in a day. And uh, if you check the box, we, and even if you buy a pre-mount turntable, we will take it out of the box and we will take pictures of the performance of it. Check the overhang, check the motor, make sure that nothing is funky because sometimes right out of the box, they can be a little whack. So if you buy a table from us and if there's a box to check, check the box and we're gonna make sure everything is perfect for you. So guess what I got today? I went to Amazon and I said, how can I find a vice president of research and development for Parasound? And I found one and I put them in my shopping cart. And so I have Darren Myers here from Parasound. Darren. Hey, Kevin. Hi. Thanks for having me. Right on, dude. So, you know, Darren is uh, now the, the full disclosure here. This was designed by John Curl. John Curl, right? And John Curl is a. a you know, kind of an icon in the industry, would you say? He is, yes. Yeah, yeah he is. And uh, now Darren is taking the helm now at Parasound. Is that correct? I am. Tell us about yeah. that. So I, I've been, uh, so now I'm leading the research and development here at Parasound. And, uh, you know, we're really uh, proud to be the premier brand for John's equipment and John's art. Yeah, and that's what it is. And I've always been very fond of uh, Parasound going way back, you know, to the old days. Uh, I know where the brand came from because I've been doing this, you know, since the dinosaurs roamed the earth. So I know where the name came from. I know who was running it before. And now I've met the uh, new people and I can see what is going on because it's been a great brand. I gotta say something about Parasound. You know, you talk about, I always talk about skipping the bullshit and you know, if you got a, some guy who says, I'm a, I was a nuclear engineer on a submarine, that's what they all say. But that's got nothing to do with engineering products, right? Right, yes. So, uh, so I, I've always been really into, uh, you know, high-end audio and it was always my dream when I was uh, growing up to uh, be a high-end audio engineer and to study circuits and to use my ears as well as all my measurement devices to uh, create the uh, you know the best product that I possibly can to reproduce music. And one of the guys who I followed and I was always a massive fan of was John Curl. And so it's my pleasure and my honor to represent him today. Right on. Well, I got to flip my camera around here because I got to tell, you know, when I looked inside here, let me turn it around. Uh, there we go. Look inside of this thing. And we're going to have another camera view of this. But when I saw this, I said, this is the real deal. I, I mean, I'd seen yeah. things that I've never seen before in really any phono stage. I've seen a couple things I've never seen, even in crazy expensive stuff. But I mean, this is like, you've done everything right. So can I ask you a question? I'm just gonna go through it, starting at the power cord. I love the AC polarity inverting. Yes. You want to tell them what that's about? Yes. So what you'll see with a lot of um, the features of this phono preamp is really 50 years of knowledge of designing phono preamps and also experiencing how phono preamps uh, react in the field and how to really lower noise and also deal with conditions uh, in your listening room. And so the AC polarity switch, what it uh, allows you to do is switch the polarity of the line and the neutral on the input of the phono preamp. And the reason why this is critical is because you can have uh, your your AC polarity can actually be reversed in your wall. And then uh, John's also seen throughout the years, uh, you know, exotic power cables reversing the polarity as well. So, so it really allows you to uh, be able to get the polarity right, which is going to lower the noise. So if, sometimes uh, it's actually quite common for 
uh, for people to run into some sort of ground loop or hum that they mm -hmm. just cannot resolve, especially with phono stages because it's such a high gain device. Right. And so this allows you to uh, reduce or eliminate a ground loop that otherwise you just could not kill. Right on. All right, now let's take a peek here because I saw something that I really like. Come on, camera. Flip back around. All right, now look at this. This is where the power cord comes in. And look at this, uh, what I like to call uh, a big ass compa capacitor, right? That's right. And what's yep. that about? This is a large polypropylene film, uh, what's called a motor run capacitor. And this is to condition the AC. So if you have, uh, if you're close to noise sources like RF towers, like radio towers, or or there is some other device in your system that is radi radiating RF energy into your into your AC line, this is going to clean it up. So what this is is it's an integrated power conditioner built into the phono stage itself. Right on. And then we go from there and we go right up to this can which looks to me like one of the things I love to see in a phono stage, and that's a, a toroidal power transformer, but it goes beyond that, right? This is a custom potted transformer, and the potting allows you, uh, what it's going to do is, it's gonna reduce any sort of noise. Uh, uh, this is mechanical noise that the, uh, that the transformer could give off due to the windings being slightly loose. So when you pot it and you put uh, epoxy uh, within the transformer, it secures those windings and it allows the transformer to be mechanically very quiet. Right on, right on. And then moving over here, I see, let's see, I see some uh, transistors there, it looks like. Then I yeah. see a choke, mm -hmm. right? And then I see some yeah. caps, so, and then I see what looks like are those hex threads or what is it? Those are uh, fast recovery diodes. I believe they are hex thread diodes. And right. of course, you know, not the not the cheapest implementation, but John uh, is uh, very passionate about the quality of the diodes in the uh, bridge rectifier and how it affects the sonic quality. Right on, right on. So you got uh, two capacitors, then this is... Uh... A choke, right? This is a common mode choke. So on one <laughs> side, you have the positive DC supply. And on the other side, you have the uh, negative DC supply. Right on, right on. So, so beautiful. And then uh, let's see, are there anything else you want to tell me before we move to this panel here? You have uh, really high quality pulp, uh, polypropylene capacitors for the bypass caps. Uh, John is... Uh, you know, very passionate also about the quality of the bypass capacitors, which I think for many engineers, it's a it's an afterthought. It's, uh, let me just put an electrolytic here or uh, some, you know, cheap capacitor that has a lot of capacitance, but here you get to see the attention to detail, even at this, you know, at this price level, it's really phenomenal. Oh my God, it's, un I'm telling you, it is un be leaveable and then the you know the results speak for themselves and how it sounds all right now we have this right here why don't you tell that tell us what this is so what this is it, these are uh shields that are shielding between you have three compartments here you you have the ac region which you're pointing to now you have the the, mm -hmm. the power supply and then you have the signal path which is where your hand is right now and these shields are made of low carbon mild steel so this is like a ferromagnetic uh, uh metal that has uh, a lot of attenuation for it provides a lot of attenuation for magnetic fields so if you just have if we just had like aluminum there the aluminum actually won't attenuate magnetic fields very well it will attenuate electromagnetic fields um but you need a a ferrous type of uh, material there to really uh, provide great shielding at low frequency with these magnetic fields. And that's what that is. Right on. <clears throat> and then this is what I could not believe. This was something else that really shocked me because all of this is shocking. I mean, that's, you know, 
My wife asks me, like, what, here, let me get back in here. My wife always asks me, Kevin, what turns you on? And I go, oh my God, a Faraday shield, right? <laughs> What's more exciting than that, right? I mean, and when I opened this up, I was like, wow, this is something. So now we're gonna go to the actual, because this is all power supply, all this other stuff, right? That's where, and that's where the attention, and you gotta spend money. I tell you guys all the time, don't try to power your way to good sound. Drop the noise floor, drop the noise floor. Dynamic range is yep. the difference between light and dark and loud and soft. And you only get that by having good parts in it, right? That's right, and so with phono stages, uh, the, you know, if you have, for instance, uh, gain at one kilohertz and you have, let's say 60 dB uh, of gain at one kilohertz. Well, at 20 Hertz, you have almost 20 dB more. So wow. you can, you can imagine how, how much that is. So that's, that's in the uh, logarithmic sense. But if we take that to the linear domain, you're, you're now talking about, you know, 20,000 20, plus uh, times gain at, at 20 Hertz. Wow. Okay. So you need shielding and it's very difficult to make phono stages exceptionally quiet. And that's what's been done here. Yeah, and it is. All right, now we're gonna get to the little boxes and the controls on the back, how much gain it's got and all that fun stuff, okay? So right. tell us about, cause I see these bayonet type plugs, right? I guess that's kind of a screw down din. Is that what that is? I guess, I don't know. Anyway, tell us about what's in the box. That's what I want to know. Yes. So these are uh, so these are the signal paths now. So left and right channels, all enclosed. The signal does not leave the the boxes. Um, so the the signal goes in in uh, from the rear panel and then it exits. Uh, so those cables that are connected to these boxes are only the power supply. They they and and control. Uh, cables, uh, the, the signal never leaves it. So uh, this allows uh, a very short signal path and it allows, uh, uh, again, uh, great noise performance because you have another layer of shielding uh, within already this enclosed area that is there. Right, yeah. And you know, <clears throat> when you turn on, when you have a phono stage, sometimes people go, Oh, I put my ear up to the tweeter and I hear hiss. Of course you're going to. When you have 60 dB of gain, you know, that's a massive amount of gain. So don't concern yourself with that. When you drop the needle, that's what, that's what counts. And when you drop the needle with this phono stage, it's gonna rock your world, right? That's right. Yep, yep. Okay, now we're gonna go to the back because I love this. This is where you plug in uh, your uh, turntable, and then it, you've got the input and then the output, right? That's right. So the output, you've got single-ended and balanced uh, for yeah. each channel. And then how is that achieved, if you don't mind me asking, the balanced out? The balanced out is, uh, so the positive phase is inverted for the negative uh, output. So the, okay. the, entire, the entire phono stage is single-ended, until right. the, the very end. And then you've got um, moving coil, moving magnet. You've got uh, continuously variable, uh, uh, oh my God, resistance. Yeah, so th this is a really high quality Vichet potentiometer. Um, it, it varies uh, from 50 ohms to 500 ohms or 550 ohms, and it allows you to um, to get the resistive loading on your moving coil cartridge exactly how you want. Yeah, I love that because sometimes you just can't quite get it there. And I think people yeah. misunderstand what you're doing. You're adding resistance literally to the cantilever of your turntable, right? I mean, yes, in essence. And, yes, you are. And, and so what it, it actually affects the cue of the response. And so it's not subtle. It's uh, mm -hmm. when you when you move your loading uh, and vary it a couple hundred ohms, 
it's actually quite dramatic what it what it does to the sound. And uh, it's one of the reasons why we love analog, because we get to calibrate the tonality of our setup or our, our front end setup for our overall system. Right on. We don't exactly have that that flexibility with um, with, with digital front end. So this allows you to get your tonality, the top end uh, response of your moving coil, uh, uh, not just correct for the cartridge, but also for your taste. Right. And then finally, you've got um, a mono button on the front. Yep. Right. And that can yep. be helpful, correct? It can. So, uh, you know, if you're listening to a mono record, um, you can achieve uh, a better noise performance and overall better sound by just combining the channels. Yeah, yeah. Um, I gotta tell you, I just love this, you know, I mean, I like value for the money and I, you know, like we sell Prima Luna, which is another super high value brand in the world of tubes, you know, and I consider you guys to be kind of a brethren in the world of solid state, I guess is the best way to put it. I mean, no BS, real parts, real engineering, and I really, really dig that. Any parting thoughts before uh, I uh, shut her down here? Well, you know, I think uh, when, you, when you look at something like this and you look at the construction and you look at the insides, what it screams is, is passion. It screams someone who really, really cares about what they're doing and they're willing to go the extra mile on everything. And not only that, but 50 years, again, of knowledge about how to design these things. And John, you know, I, I, I see him as, you know, the world's greatest uh, phono stage designer and, yeah. and analog designer. And uh, we're just, again, we're just so, well, I, I should say, I speak for myself. I'm so honored to be able to work with John. And so yeah. uh, this is John's art and I'm proud of what he's he's made here. Right on, right on. So look, folks, <clears throat> come down to our beautiful store here in Southern California. We got all kinds of goodies for you to look at. Talk to my non-commissioned salespeople. Nobody here is gonna make a buck selling you something or not. We just wanna make sure that you're happy and we understand and If you know where my team came from and where they worked at before they came here to upscale, I mean, I've got, I mean, real rock stars. You know, I mean, they're just known for being very, very passionate, just like I am. So talk to my non-commissioned salespeople, go to our website, pop it in your shopping cart. At Upscale Audio, we're going to treat your system like it's ours. Let's say goodbye. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you so much, Darren. We'll see you. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.